Hi everyone, Scott here from the Old Curiosity Shop. Really small haul to show you and uh, I'm going to talk about some things that I kind of wish I hadn't purchased. But here they are. We'll start out right here with a set of 10 plates. These are made in Bavaria and they have some hand painting but they also have some decal work on them. Now, these are something that I kind of wish I didn't buy, although I only paid, I think, f maybe $4.50 for the set of 10 plates. There's not a chip or a crack on any of them, so that's fantastic. Uh, I'll show you, they're all uh, somewhat the same, although there's some hand-painted work on it. If I bring it over to the light, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this. If you'll notice right there on what looks like a... Oh, let's just call it a chrysanthemum. It's probably not. You'll notice you can see in the light there's raised paint, especially on the petals. That's the hand-painted part. The rest of it, which you're probably not going to be able to tell, is actually a transfer or what we would call a decal. And that's the reason why you don't see on the back hand-painted, there's hand-painted detail but most of this if you'll notice right there in the light you can almost see well let's see i'm trying to get it can you can you see there's a shininess and a flatness and if you look at this under a magnifying glass um, which i didn't need to do but when i do and you really aren't going to be able to tell um, sometimes you'll see little dots this isn't working uh, <laughs> and uh, you, you just know that it's a decal there's a there's you'll see a change in the, from the edge of the porcelain to where the decal actually begins and then this gilded stuff here is too un uniformly done it overlaps itself in places like right there if someone was hand painting that they would never bring that stem into that leaf so this is all machine done with some quick hand painted details at the end. All right, turn it back over and look at the back of it. And we'll see the mark is right here. So we see it's made in Bavaria. And the company is uh, Scherzer, Z Scherzer and Company, I think. I, I forget. I, I looked it up, but now I can't remember. Uh, and that's just a production number. Held up to the light, I see my hand through the back. So it's uh, semi-opaque. The light does, my fingers do go through it. Can you see there? Okay, so uh, why do I wish I hadn't bought it? Because hand-painted porcelains, even the good stuff, has really, really tanked. This is okay. It's we're, as it's the fall and then the holiday season, people are entertaining. People look towards their homes now. This probably had a coffee. It's, this could have been from a set. There, there could have been coffee pots, teapots. Um, this could have been from a larger dinner set or a dessert set. A lot of this stuff was made. Bavaria, of course, is one of the German states. It's down there in the, let's see, Bavaria is down in the southeastern part of Germany. Um, the capital is Munich, one of the largest cities in Germany. And of course we have the Bavarians to thank by and large for our custom of Oktoberfest. A lot of national pride in Bavaria. They speak a high form of, of German, uh, what's called High German. And Bavarians often think of themselves as Bavarians first and Germans second. Uh, there is some wear to the surface. They're pretty. That one probably has the most amount of wear right there. But um, I guess you can't really, I'll back up so you can see them all. What would a set like this sell for? Well, you know, it's funny. There are single plates on Etsy right now for like $75 a plate. Good luck. 
Uh, same thing with eBay. You'll see people selling them for $5 a plate and other people who really haven't done their research and they're asking $70, $80. I think I would be lucky out of this entire stack of 10 plates um, to get $35 for them perhaps. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I kind of wish I didn't buy them. Too late now. I wish I didn't buy this. <laughs> it's pretty. It's Lefton. Uh, let's get it up here. Lefton China. We all know about Lefton Company. Uh, now this is hand painted and this is porcelain as well. We can see it is. You see my fingers through it. Creamer, sugar, wood lid, six plates, three coffee mugs, and a vase. Now, what? Oh, the cat is mad. Okay, well, he'll have to just get glad. Uh, when I bought this, it had four mugs. I knew that it was six plates with only four mugs. I was fine with that because I thought this could be sold as a dessert set. So you have four mugs, four plates, and then two extra plates to put cookies on or cranberry juice sauce or whatever. But it was all wrapped up in that big, thick Goodwill tape. It actually wasn't a Goodwill that I stopped at. It was somewhere else. And I was nervous because the way they had, they, the way they stacked the cups, they had them sort of stacked like this. And there was a lot of pressure put on these handles and I was so worried that when I unwrapped it I would find a broken handle and alas alack I found a broken handle so I was mad um, and I had I just tossed the cup because I don't deal with broken handles all right here's the dilemma I paid four dollars and fifty cents it is pretty it is in beautiful shape uh, now do I go and get another mug? Do I go and get three more mugs? What, Salem? You mad? Uh, or do I just park this stuff out? I did go on eBay and I see where I can pick up three mugs for eight bucks plus like another eight bucks in shipping. That's 16 I paid for. If I do that, now I'm into it by 20 bucks. There goes the profit. How much could I sell this set for as we get closer to Christmas if I go ahead and buy the other three mugs? Considering I would then have about 20 bucks in it. Is it worth it? Well, I don't really want to put it online and let it sit there. Um, I could get the other mugs and give it away as a gift. Or I could just part it out. I haven't decided yet. But I just wanted to keep it honest, keep it real, and let you know sometimes we buy things, get them home, and they're broken. We have uh, doubts about things that we purchased. And then we find some good stuff. Now this I paid a dollar, uh, no, I paid $10 for this. It is a desk set, double ink wells. It dates to just after the turn of the century. The base is mahogany, never been refinished. And these are self-closing ink wells. I'll show you how they work. We'll pull one out. And I'll let you see how complete... Of course, that one's not... Okay. I'll let you see how complete it is. This is the... Shh, hold on. The Senbush Self-Closing Ink Stand. Made in the USA. In Milwaukee and we can see the patent dates first in 1903, 04 and then again in 07. So we know that this was made sometime right around two, uh, 1907, could have been made in 1908, 1909 but before another patent was issued. We can see inside the way this works is in goes the ink into this beautiful uh, leaded glass inkwell and then the ink causes this glass piece in here to rise. And so when you dip your, uh, your pen in to get the ink, the ink is going to cause that glass disc to rise back up and seal this off and close it off so that you're not screwing and unscrewing an ink bottle constantly. Very nice. No chips, no cracks in the glass. I love the original green felt. They're both here, they're both complete. Uh, one sold 
modestly for about $50 and its base was glass, not mahogany. I haven't found any that have sold recently with a wooden, original wooden mahogany base. Is the glass base more valuable than the mahogany? I don't know, but I know I'm gonna put this online and see if we can get 40 to $60 for it. I'm pretty certain that it's a sure bet at around 50 bucks. So I'm hoping to get a good $40 profit on that. Back there is a building that I know very well. It's only a few blocks away from where I live. This is the great big old Strawbridge and Clothier store in Philadelphia. And yes, it was completed in 1931. And it is still standing. Corner of 8th and Market. It department store closed. I want to say it's been about 10 years now, maybe 12 years. But uh, I always remember as a kid, and yes, this department store was full from the basement to the top. And there was a beautiful restaurant right up at the top called the Corinthian Room. It was a huge, fancy restaurant where, oh my goodness, I, I could go on and on and on about this great big old department store. Anyway, it's long gone. So this is a piece of Philadelphia history. This was probably made and put in stores to advertise that this store was coming in 1931. By the way, the building has mixed use now. Uh, there is retail space all on the first, I think, three floors. And then there's some newspaper offices on the rest of the way up. And it still looks exactly like that. Just turn that around and let you see that for a second. This vast new building now under construction. So this is something that will be probably sold to a Philadelphian. All right, now back over here. <clears throat> excuse me. I sold this frame for 20, 25 bucks or so, I think. <clears throat> and the person, once they received it, they had a problem with it and they wanted a refund. I gave them the refund um, and I have the frame back again. So this is kind of an educational video, although most of you probably already know what I'm going to tell you. The reason why the person sent this frame back is because they said that, that they were unhappy because they were not able to, it wouldn't take stain. Now, if you look at the corners here, which I'm going to try to get to focus now. You see the white? Okay. This frame is covered in gesso, which is a plaster. I have tons of pictures. You can clearly see this. Uh, I didn't say in the description, by the way, if you're going to try to stain this, uh, the gesso does not take stain because I would never stain this. I would never, I wouldn't do anything to this. I am a purist. I like things in there written. I'd clean it, but I certainly wouldn't try to do anything to alter this frame because it took it 120 some years to look like this. So either the person didn't really know what gesso is or that you can't, you can't really stain over top of artificial graining. This is all artificial paint. Well, the grain is artificial, the paint isn't. But what I wanted to show you is um, what I think the person tried to do. And let me see if I can do this while holding this camera. I have a couple things here I want to show you. I do love Howard products. They're great. I also like Minwax. And I'm going to start off by taking just a little bit of Restore Finish by Howard. And I'm going to show you that you really cannot stain a frame like this. All right, hold on. One-handed isn't easy. So here's the Minwax. Let's go to or the Howards. Let's go down here to the white gesso. And if we go over it, you'll see nothing's happening. Not a thing. All right. Gesso won't take scratch covers, uh, commercial scratch covers like this. And this is the darkest color they make, which is dark walnut. If this was just wood, you would be able to stain it. Now, <clears throat> what might help a little bit is if I take one of these stain uh, markers. This is made by the Minwax Company. And shake it up. Shake it up. Who signed that? Devo? No. Shake it up. Mm. 
Somebody will tell me in the comments who's saying shake it up. All right, now, if I go down to this corner now and sort of just dab on here, you'll notice that's working somewhat. That's just taking sort of the sharpness of the white gesso off. Now I'd let that, doesn't take it away completely. And I could do a better job if I weren't holding this camera. But I'm going to just let it sit there for a second. And then come in here and sort of wipe off. Now, I'm sure that in this bright light you're saying, oh, look how white it is. I can tell you that it took a little bit of the sharpness off. If I let that dry and I come back and do it again, you'll see more of the gesso is being covered now, obscured by the stain. So you could lessen the effect of it if you wanted to, um, but such is the nature of these types of frames. Now, uh, as I said, I would, this frame dates to the 1880s. The East Lake movement, the aesthetic movement, the arts and crafts movement, all these movements were coming together. And we see that style here with this delicate decoration. It's a really thick frame and typical of that era. So um, what I would say is if, if, <laughs> You're interested in buying a frame like this and it's artificially grained and you see white which is going to be gesso if you want it to look like it came out of Ikea yesterday don't buy it because you're not going to get all these nicks out of there and you shouldn't get all these nicks out of there leave them alone put a little bit of some scratch cover on and if you want to to try to just mute the sharpness of it a little bit but it's gonna look old, right? It's a hundred and umpty ump years old. And I think the person who bought it wanted to slick it up, and when they tried to, they were not able. I could have told them that, but they just might not have realized about the composition of frames like this. So that's it. What do you think? Should I buy three more mugs and try to sell this for 60 bucks or so it's great quality what do you think about the painted bavarian porcelain or semi-porcelain dessert plates be curious to know all right everybody it's scott from the old curiosity shop saying thanks for watching and before i say so long in the next video i promise you you're going to hear my entire theme song song i'm going to tell you who recorded it i'm going to show you pictures of the singer and because everybody's been asking, well, not everybody, but a lot of people have been asking me about it. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that. Okay, now I can say it. So long for now.